Kapula was published at CHI 2011. CHI is a human computer interaction conference. So, Kapula helps people figure out where to go next uh, based on the user's current interest. So, it would work really well with techniques from attention routing. Because attention routing would provide you with possibly uh, interesting and good starting point. While Apollo can help you expand from those good starting points uh, to the, the neighborhood. So here I'm showing you a quick example of uh, citation network. So as you look here is a paper, and an edge would mean uh, one paper citing the other. So suppose my current interest or my current starting point is one XCI paper and a data mining paper. And suppose I'm a grad student, uh, first year grad student, so my advisor gave me these two, two papers and asked me to find out more about what's happening in the literature. So where, what are the papers that I want to uh, read next? So intuitively, you would imagine, well, papers that are close to my current interest uh, would be things that I'd like to read. So papers that are close to my current UCI paper, uh, I want to uh, read next. So close here meaning papers that have either cited my paper or been cited my paper. So simply for the data mining uh, uh, scenario as well. And also in between, in between, probably this is the paper that uh, reached the two areas. So that's the intuition. So if you believe in it, then that means we can actually use the Gilbert association concept that I described before. Things that are similar, the further away, and the less likely to be relevant. That also means we can use Gilbert propagation. But here we're using in a very, very different uh, uh, way. So I'll give you a demo of uh, how Bologna work, uh, a Bologna work, sorry. And here I'm trying to uh, show you how we can make sense of the sense-making literature. So sense-making is a subfield in XCI, uh, which basically study how people make sense of information. So you can imagine it's an area that overlap, that has many sub, sub areas. Um, and here what I'm showing here is the final outcome that we want so my starting point here is one paper. So you can imagine, say, you're a first year grad student, you're given this paper. So it's called the sense cost structure of sense making. It's a very famous paper in uh, sense making literature. And what you want to do is you want to find the related area. Here in blue, information visualization. Then er another area is about searching collaborative search. And then another the area about information management. So you want to find these areas and also find some good examples paper in each so this is the outcome that we want. So this is a citation data uh, network that I described before, and this has about 150,000 uh, citations among 80,000 papers. So this is how it looks like, a whole looks like in the beginning. So your starting paper is in the middle, and at the bottom, it will show you details of the paper. So the same information that you can get from Google Scholar. So title, author, citation, count, uh, how many of them. So in the beginning, when there's only one paper, uh, on the right, it will show you uh, all the papers that have either cited my starting paper or being cited my paper. So what I will do is this. I will quickly uh, skip through the, the paper title. So here I'm cheating a little bit here. Uh, if you really want to know uh, more about your paper, you can click on it, you can uh, go to the uh, PDF uh, down here. So you can click on it and see the PDF. But I'm here, I'm doing uh, for demonstration purposes. So I'm just going through the, uh, uh, the title. And I see, well, down here there is one that's called Information Visualization, which is it looks like a pretty general paper. So that might be a good area. That, that might be a good area. And then another one that's about uh, searching. So it's an interface about searching. So that's probably another area. So I just drag all these uh, two into the visualization. And I close the pane. And I say, well, these might be good enough for now. So why don't I create two groups for it? One for each. So the first one I call the search group. And the other one I call it InfoVis, so for information visualization. So two things happen here. So once I created two groups, uh, a color is assigned to each group, and then also these two papers become what we call the exemplars for each group. Uh, and also, 
after creating the, those groups, then I can ask a poll to say, for the search group, give me 10 suggestions. So the, how we use the example, uh, the example of paper there is that, well, because I express interest in that paper, then a poll will use this information to infer half the likelihood of all the other paper, how likely it would uh, be related to my search group. So notice that Billy Propagation is actually running in the background um, while we speak. And also these uh, suggestions are ranked by how likely that, that Apollo thinks they believe to the group. So it's indicated by color saturation. The more saturated color, the more likely that Apollo thinks they belong to them. So it's already uh, ranked by the uh, likelihood. So I quickly skim through the title again, sorry. And then I saw that the first one uh, is a survey of collaborative web search practices. So it, it does uh, relate to, to the search. So I dragged it into the group. So it becomes an other example. So similarly, I dragged the second one, which is also about search. So I think it's pretty good. So I found two additional papers, and I believe the rest. And now I go back to my starting paper. So I think, well, since now I have two groups, maybe I can find related papers that are directly connected to my starting paper. So here, uh, the papers originally are sorted by citation count. So the size here means uh, uh, how many times a paper is cited. So the larger uh, the note on paper, the more times they've been cited. So it's sorted by citation count in the beginning. But since now I have two groups, so I can instead ask for Polo to sort them by how likely they belong to the information visualization. So the orders change. And I can look at the first one and see it is about information visualization. So it's a good example, another one. So I drag it into that group. And now you notice that there are more color changes here. So that's a, a good thing because that means Apollo is agreeing my, with my action. So, so that the colors are updated. And then there are two more which are also about information visualization. So I put them into the group. So there are more color changes to confirm um, my action. And also I can spatially separate these two. So there are two contexts out uh, surrounding the, uh, the whole paper. And then I go down the list. And then I saw that, well, there's actually maybe an other potential group that's about information management. So I create another group for it, and that paper became an example. So that is how you would use a poll. And ask for kind of suggestion, and so on. So the key idea of poll is very simple. The user will specify an example, and then a poll will find related paper uh, using delete propagation. So you may ask, why are you using delete propagation and not other methods? The reason is that uh, Apollo's or belief propagation is able to support many, many desirable features in sense making that other algorithm is not able to concurrently support. For example, supporting multiple groups or arbitrary number of groups, uh, multiple examples in each group, uh, positive and negative examples. I did not show negative examples here, but it's a more negative example. And also, it's fast, so it's able to handle millions of those and edges in real time. And we are the first to adapt the propagation for sense making. So for the other methods that we have tried, I'll say here, the graph cut or random mock restart, found that they are very similar uh, in the case that when you only have two groups, but you want more than two groups, then you will have to use the delete propagation. So in a paper that we published in PKDD, another data mining conference, we showed that belief propagation can do more than random mock restart. Um, so that's an, a follow up part. So the main contribution of Apollo is that you can really create an experience that combine human and machine together. Actually, for the, some of the users of Apollo, they commented that um, it's a very natural way of interacting with information. It's as if how they would do it um, normally. 
It's like having a partnership with the machine. Is they are not doing anything different. And also, uh, a pool is able to create a very personalized landscape for each user, meaning based on each person's individual experience or knowledge about the data, they can create very different landscapes. <coughs> So, uh, Apollo is my baby, so I have squeezed in my name there, uh, Apollo, although I forgot what the acronym stands for anymore. <laughs> uh, and uh, it ran through several uh, design iterations, so it started back in 2009. So it is the first uh, interface of how it looked like. And it's exactly what you expected, um, of putting the result of an algorithm directly into an interface. So it's just a long list of things. Um, so each box here, it, it, it uh, means it uh, represents a group. So we let users use, use it, and uh, it's a disaster, because people have no idea how things are related within a group and also uh, between groups. So we put in the visualization here, and we found people like it. Uh, we also saw that people don't really use the list anymore, which we put on the left here. And the only time that they use it is when they want to rank things or sort things. So that prompts to say, well, we can probably get rid of them. And then provide the ranking place feature that you saw before, where we can change the ranking of the uh, ranking place of the visualization. So you may ask, so well, how well does a follow that? So we evaluate it using citation data. Uh, so we compare follow with uh, Google Scholar, which I'll talk about in the next slide. Uh, but the task for the participants in the user study is that we want them to use Apollo or Google Scholar to find related papers uh, for two sections in a survey paper about user interface research. So the two sections that we gave them, so these are paraphrased uh, section title. The first uh, section we gave them is about model-based generation of user interface. Second one is rapid prototyping tool. So model-based generation of user interface <coughs> is uh, how we can automatically generate user interface based on a model that computer scientists can create. And second one, uh, rapid prototyping is about how we can quickly create a uh, user interface. So this is the actual uh, survey paper that was provided to the participants. So it was a between subject uh, study. And then, as I said, there are polar condition and Google Scholar condition. For each condition, there are six participants who are either grad student or research staff. So they have some idea about the computer sciences in general, but uh, computer science in general, but not about user interface in specific. So for the two sessions that uh, we gave them, uh, model based and prototyping, uh, which I call them here, for sure, uh, I will ask them to find. 10 papers that they think are relevant uh, for each uh, section. So after pulling all together these papers, we gave them to two expert judges, two professors in XGI, who are very familiar with user interface research. And for each paper, each uh, expert judge would give you, uh, give the paper either a score of one if the thing is relevant, or a zero if it's not relevant. So that means each paper would get at most a score of two or a minimum of zero. And here's the result. So for all uh, uh, the both section, the model based and prototyping does better, and also on average uh, Apollo also does better. Uh, but for model based, it's not significantly better because it turns out that it's very easy to just type in model based these two words into Google Scholar and immediately you can get a lot of uh, relevant papers. While well, prototyping is a lot harder because prototyping is actually a pretty abstract uh, terminology or, or, and um, prototyping happens in many other related, uh, other research areas as well, not just in computer science. So that's why it's all a lot harder. In this case, Apollo wins significant. And on average, Apollo is also is better. Uh, so for all these tests, we use a two-tailed t test. So, we can quickly for Apollo. So, it is a system that combines machine learning, visualization, and inter interaction to help people explore a large network. And it can also generate a personalized landscape 
uh, based on the user's experience. So currently, Apple is contributing to uh, Docker's Atoms program so as a major virtualization tool. So Atoms stands for anomaly detection in multiple scales. So what the program would like to do is to detect uh, inside the thread. So Apollo is one component to help the analysts to, to understand what those uh, threads are. So inside of the threads, you might remember that a couple years ago there was a uh, shooting um, in the Fort Hood military base where a psychiatrist turned violent and killed a lot of people. So those uh, are the threads that uh, John would really like to detect. So originally good uh, individuals who uh, suddenly turned bad. So for this project, uh, I've seen use effort to work with for other institutions of over uh, 50 uh, researchers. And we also have recent work in using Apollo to enable interactive big data analytics. So to enable interactive analytics, we really need to com combine uh, how we can process big data efficiently using cloud computing, and also we need to provide an interface, interactive interface for people to interact with data at a smaller scale. So the idea is here is to do all the expensive things on the cloud and then uh, extract samples and that can be transferred to a user's computer uh, to do inference and visualization uh, locally. So that's what Apollo does. And for the uh, big data or the uh, uh, cloud computing part, we I have the uh, project packages, uh, which also kind of part of, uh, which is a collection of the massive scale graph mining algorithm uh, that implemented on top of it. So for this project, we have one of the uh, open source software world challenge in 2011. And for this whole work, it's published in the uh, signal as a demo 